Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Library, where Star Wars is in print, the Force is with the readers, and we find out that King Gornish has a son who's never seen again in this episode. I'm your host, Nathan B. Butler. This time we're looking at Ewoks number 13. We're nearing the end. There's only one more of this series to go, entitled The Black Cavern. It says up at the top, will anyone escape the Black Cavern? And inside, we have uh, Wicket going up against the Guardian of the Sun Crystal. Uh, the Sun Crystal Guardian saying, Peekaboo! With Boogut, the son of King Gornish of the Dulocks, there in the background uh, looking very panicked and such. You can find this these days in the pages of Star Wars Omnibus, Droids, and Ewoks. Now, we should note a timing issue here. This issue came out in January of 1987. Now, at this point... Droids is still going. It's got a February issue before it officially ends. And the original Marvel series, of course, is out of the way. The Droids cartoon series is gone. But to add to all these things that have ended up to this point, so now has the Ewoks cartoon series. The Ewoks cartoon series returned with its second season, a very altered season, in September of 1986. It then ends in December of 1986. So not only are we into a new year, 1987, but we're into a new era for these in which we are sort of back to a lot like we were in early 1985, where we've got a comic series with no cartoon series to tie it into. In this case, because it has ended. In the previous case, because it hadn't started yet, and the comics sort of jumped the gun, in a sense, on this aspect of the franchise. Now, this actually isn't too terrible of a story for an Ewoks comic. I mean, it's probably one of the better ones in the series. We start out with uh, Wicket going through some trials, right? Uh, Head Elder Kazak, who's this guy there in the red and the purple, is there. And uh, Wicket is going to go through a set of trials to prove him to be a warrior. And apparently the Ewoks use sort of a Boy Scout sash, Girl Scout sash kind of thing here. And they earn things to put on it, kind of like merit badges, as they become warriors throughout the course of their lifetimes. Well, in this case... He's supposed to uh, swing through a set of spikes, a set of spears, nailing a target that's hanging from a tree, and eventually he's supposed to get to the end where he gets the sun crystal that is on the end of a spear at the end of the course. Well, turns out that the Dulocks, back again for only their second appearance and their final appearance in this series, just like uh, Morag only showed up twice, they are plotting to steal the Sun Crystal. Now, Gornish has brought his son into this. Now, you may be saying, son? Gornish has a son? Or you may be saying, Gornish is the name of the Duloc leader? Yes, his name is Gornish, and he apparently has a son, this little dude named Boogut. Okay? And Boogut is uh, trying to prove himself to his relatively, apparently in here, somewhat verbally abusive daddy and uh, decides that his way of doing it is he's going to cut the rope that Wicket is swinging down on. But in doing so, that makes Wicket fall amid the spikes, not getting stabbed, thankfully. He bounces, 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 and then hits the thing the sun crystal was on. There's sun crystal there. And boom, smashes the thing completely. The Elder is angry as hell about this. But really, it's partly anger, not just at that but at the way that they're doing these warrior challenges anyway. Because he says the Sun Crystal has been a symbol of Ewok courage for basically a hundred years. But the thing is, they used to actually have to go find a Sun Crystal as a sign of courage. They had to go into the Black Cavern to get it, which is very dangerous. Instead, now, it's just used as a symbol in these, you know, kind of obstacle course type of things. That's not a real showing to show that someone truly is a warrior. However, turns out that Wicket and Tebow overhear this conversation between Chirpa and the Elder. This causes Wicket to decide that he's going to go into the Black Cavern and get a new Sun Crystal to prove his worth and to make up for breaking the previous one, which he thinks, at least, was his fault. He asks Tebow not to tell the truth about what's going on, and Boogut overhears this after being told to go the heck away by his dad after screwing up their plans to steal it and instead getting it destroyed. Boogut decides to follow Wicket. Nisa, meanwhile, brings news to Tebow that, hey, the wire, the rope was cut. It wasn't Wicket's fault. Then, of course, Tebow's like, uh-oh, but he's already ran off to put himself into danger to prove himself. Uh, they wind up using Logray's little weird, like, spinning crystal viewer thing. 
to find out that, yes, turns out that uh, Wicked is on his way to the Black Cavern, but so is Booga. They know that a Duloc is following him. They race off to try to get there before Wicked can be killed. Now, by this point, we're nearing the end of Part 2. Part 2 entitled, I love this, Risky Business. Risky Business. <laughs> you might expect uh, uh, Wicked to come sliding out in his underwear to... Da -da 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 -da. If you're not a fan of old 80s movies or Tom Cruise films, you won't have the slightest idea what I'm talking about, probably. Suffice to say, Risky Business Part 2 is ending as we move into Part 3, Trapped in the Cavern. And it turns out that just like uh, Mount Sorrow, or the, 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 the Mountain of Sorrows and such a while back, uh, yeah, we got another piece of living landscape. The Black Cavern can talk. And it's basically warning him away, saying, look, actually very much like uh, the young Jedi arc in the Clone Wars cartoon series where they had to get out of the temple on Ilum before it froze back closed. An Ewok can go inside looking for a sun crystal, but has to be back outside before the mouth of this cave finally closes. Otherwise, they will be trapped forever. Or in theory, at least until somebody else comes and the mouth opens, right? But it says forever. They're going to be digested by the rocks or something. Who knows? It's living landscape. As Wicket enters... The other Ewoks encounter the Dulocs, and upon Chirpa telling uh, Gornish that his son is also in danger, they race off together to the Black Cavern, one of the few times that they're actually briefly cooperating. We get finds a sun crystal inside the caves, but out comes the guardian of the sun crystal, this weird uh, blue monster that tries to take them both down. Uh, Wicket runs away, as does Bogut, only... Uh, Wicked has to save Bogut at one point because Bogut's too scared to swing across a cavern, or a chasm, excuse me. So Wicked swings across, d drops the sun crystal, swings back across to get Bogut, and then back across to get them both out of there. Uh, Wicked is able to make it out, as is Bogut, but the Guardian reaches out and grabs Bogut and pulls him right back inside. Rather than letting Bogut die, as he is an honorable warrior, uh, Wicked, Wicked that is, Wicket takes a sun crystal and sticks it inside the mouth of the cave to hold it open long enough for him to run inside and save Bugut. Only, upon leaping back out, this sun crystal, just like the last one, is destroyed, this time by the closing mouth from all the pressure and such from it. Uh, the Dulocs leave, and Gornish is berating his son for a, You let Ewok save you! You disgrace to Dulocs! But, for Wicket's case, he's proven himself to be a warrior, and an honorable one at that, not only is he said to be a courageous Ewok, but he gets a little shard of that broken sun crystal to put onto his sash there, his Boy Scout-esque sash. And I should, probably shouldn't mock that too much. Uh, I don't have a digital copy of it, or I'd put a little clip in here, or not. Maybe it's fortunate for me. Um, I, I do have to find myself kind of laughing at this, how it's sort of out of place to have the Boy Scouts thing there. At one point when I was in high school... I was hired to act in a Boy Scouts promotional video. I was not a Boy Scout myself. But it was a promotional video for Trails in Popcorn, the popcorn the Boy Scouts sell. It was me and two other guys, uh, one much younger than the other two of us. And we basically were, it was like a haunted house kind of thing. Like we, it was a dream, but we wind up trying to sell popcorn at what amounts to like this huge mansion and run into Lurch and a witch and a vampire in the process of the whole thing. Really, really bizarre. It's filmed at the old uh, courthouse and the catacombs of the courthouse in Evansville, Indiana, if you're familiar with those at all from a historical perspective. Um, so seeing anything with Boy Scouts always makes you go, and kind of cringe, because boy, was it hokey. Um, but I don't know. I know maybe maybe be easier just to send Wicked out to sell some kind of Ewok popcorn rather than having him risk his life to get something that's essentially basically a marriage badge for his so-called belt of honor, as they call it. But, I don't know, I thought it was a decent little issue here. I mean, we've got uh, Wicket putting himself in peril. We've got an instance of something harkening back to Ewok history and culture. The idea that they sort of wussified the culture by making things about not real danger, but perceived fake, uh, mocked up danger with this obstacle course kind of thing. The only thing that really gets me about it is we get King Gornish's son, Bugut, which... By the way, it's kind of an interesting addition here to make Gornish a father also, but we never see Bugut again. He's not in the cartoon series. The only thing he ever appears in is this story. What happens to him afterwards? Is he banished, perhaps, for letting the Ewoks save him? Uh, does Gornish kill his own son? Does uh, Bugut eventually get to the point where he says, screw you, daddy, and leaves? We have no idea. 
It's a very strange addition to the story, just for the purposes of this story, um, and then the character never shows up again. In that, it is weird. But overall, its quality as a story, I think, is probably better than most of the Dave Manak fare that we get in this particular series. So, that being said, that it's a decent little story, is this an essential read? No, it is still not an essential read. Uh, not for Marvel, or Modern, or Ewoks readers, nor for Ewoks cartoon viewers. Really, the biggest thing that this issue should be noted for is at least it has the Dulocs in it, the enemies for most of the cartoon series, whereas most of the other issues just make up a villain. We have two with Morag, two with the Dulocs. Those are all done, and now we only have one issue left of the Ewoks series. We'll check out that in the near future on the show. For now, thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the readers.